Now before we dive in, if you find my videos useful, make sure to click that subscribe button and also make sure to click that bell icon on the side to get notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram or Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online also for the latest updates. All right, let's dive in. Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the official One UI that is finally available on the unlocked Samsung Galaxy Note 9. So I got this update yesterday on my unlocked Galaxy Note 9. So let me show you what, what that is. So if you go to the settings, if you go all the way down, go into the about, actually go to the soccer update, and you'll see that the last update was applied on March 12th. 2019 and that is the official one UI that took us from the beta to the official version or if you were just on the Android 8.0 you should have received it most likely yesterday and if you did not get it yet just uh, come to this section and just tap on download and install or check software update and you should be getting the one UI which I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for so let's do a quick tour and see what the one UI is all about uh, with the official version. So there's a couple amazing things with the One UI. Uh, I do want to quickly talk about something about the navigation bar in reference to the Samsung Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus. So if you go into display and if you go into the navigation bar right over here, uh, you'll notice that if you have an S10 or an S10 Plus, you're not going to have these two options on the top here. And this is a feature that has been removed. Now this actually is a physical button uh, that is built in under the display that is pressure sensitive, okay? So when I lock the phone, I can actually press this button, press and hold hard, and it actually uh, opens up the phone like a power on button, all right? And then I can also unlock it with the home button. So if I power this off now, and if I press and hold, uh, it goes right inside. You don't even have to uh, swipe on the lock screen. It just goes right, right inside. So there's a pressure sensitive button here that you can actually modify. You can even change the pressure levels for it. And of course, this is something that uh, probably diehard Note owners already knew. Uh, but again, on the on the uh, S10 Plus right over here, let's just log in real quick. Uh, you don't have that option, okay? Of course, it's been replaced with the in-display fingerprint sensor, but uh, there is something over here that the S10 Plus does not have if that makes you feel a little bit better. All right, so everything else is the same. Let's put this aside real quick. So with the, uh, with the navigation bar, uh, you probably know this already or not, uh, but you can uh, reverse the button order here. So you can have the back button here, the recents button here. I like it this way. You can have full screen gestures. With the full screen gestures, what you can also do now is you can actually disable the gesture hints. Up until the beta, this was not available. This, this menu here was not available. So you would see three lines at the bottom here. This is to go back home. This is to bring up the recents button. This is to go back in the menu. But now you can actually uh, disable the gesture hints. So these buttons at the bottom actually disappear to three lines. So you actually get a sensation of a real full screen with nothing at the bottom here. And again, you just have to remember that's the recents, all right? And that's the back and that's the home. So that's fantastic, all right? Now, I like to see my buttons. I'm going to keep them right there, navigation buttons. That's the way I like it. But you have the option to make it full screen if you want. Again, if you go over here, that option gets enabled. But if you go over here, obviously, it's not going to be there, okay? And I do wish they still had that little tiny button on the side here that allows you to hide the navigation bar, this bar as well. So they, they took that away. I don't know why. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's gone now. Okay, so if you want a real full screen experience, you have to go to full screen gestures and get this option. Now, one more thing is when you go to the recents over here at the bottom, you see a bunch of suggested apps. If you don't want this, you can disable this. These apps may not be necessary because most people have their apps on the on the forefront here for quick access, or or in the edge panels right here uh, under the apps edge, which right now is kind of empty. But uh, when you tap this, it pushes these windows a little bit up and gives you these recommendations at the bottom. Looks nice and colorful, but if you're a minimalist, go to settings and disable suggested apps. Now when you do that, those apps at the bottom are gone, which really, who presses this to access apps? We press this to go to the recent uh, menu. All right, so that's great. Another thing that I don't like is when you tap this one, you get this view, which is great. 
but the list view that a lot of people probably are going to notice is gone. Normally, you were able to press right here and change the list view so all these cars got stacked up in a row just like that. And that was so much easier. Now you have to swipe through all these big cards. Uh, the option is gone. Hopefully, they'll bring that back. Anyway, let's go back out. And of course, uh, another amazing thing is the night mode, which is right here. And uh, one thing that I want to show you guys with night mode is uh, you have the option to actually customize the night mode. So a lot of people are just enabling the night mode and leaving, leaving it like this is. So one thing I'm going to have you notice is if you go back here to the uh, quick toggles, you'll see that the active toggles are in blue color. And you'll also see that in the, setting, uh, in the settings, uh, when you go inside a setting, the, uh, the, the color of the text uh, that indicates that an option is on or give you some description is also in blue color. Okay, so blue, blue, blue. All right. So I just want to let you know that if you go to the theme store, and download specific themes, they are going to customize your night mode as well by default. Not all themes are going to do that, but some themes give you the option to customize the night mode as well. Some themes actually disable the night mode. All right, just remember that. So you're going to have to go and find them. But when you find them, they're going to change the colors of this can be yellow color here based on the theme. This can also be uh, gray. This can also be uh, green based on the theme that you download when you enable the night mode. And of course, we've got the new recents button here, which is also fantastic. With this one, you can always tap on the top screen here and you have a bunch of options. Uh, let me just launch the calculator app here. It was right here. That's the calculator app. Uh, if I tap on it like this, and if I tap on this, I can do a pop-up window. So that's great. All right. I can minimize this, maximize it, what I want to do. So tap on it again pop up, I can minimize this, and I can put it on the side somewhere. So I can do something on the website, I can use a calculator and then move on, all right? I can tap this anytime I wanna use it and then put it down when I don't wanna use it, all right? So you don't have to relaunch it, you can just have it on the screen uh, waiting for you. So let's maximize that, let's tap this one more time. Again, you can also tap in one more time and do a split screen view from here. So that's the split screen. Boom, all right, that's how you activate split screen. And this is how you get rid of split screen. You push away the app that you do not want. So push that away, all right? So let's uh, disable the night mode, which you can also do from the quick toggles here. So if I go over there, you'll see that here's a night mode. I can disable it right from here. So let's go into settings and take a look around a little bit. So if you go into device care, there's a couple new options here that I want you guys to see. And even enable. Uh, so you can actually do an optimize now, which is the usual, but now you have the option to schedule this optimization so it happens automatically every day on a given time. You tap on this thing right here, you go to auto optimization, and from here you can turn this on and off. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to set the time to 3 or 2 a.m. Let's just do 2 a.m. That's when most people are asleep. And then uh, exactly what would happen when you tap this is going to happen overnight automatically so when you wake up your phone is good to go okay it's fully optimized at its best behavior so you want to go here and uh, I can also recommend doing this closer to when you're waking up so do it around like uh, 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. based on what time you wake up maybe do it one hour before so that's one and the other thing is if you tap this one more time, go to auto restart, you can also restart your phone every day or once a week or twice a week as you please. Okay, again, one thing I recommend uh, doing, uh, enable this, pick the days that you want your phone to restart, okay, Monday, Wednesday, Friday in my case, and then pick a time. So this can be any time when you're asleep, four o'clock, you know, you want to make sure this doesn't happen uh, when you're in the middle of doing something in case your data gets lost or maybe you're on a phone call and you just lose the call. So make sure this is in the AM unless you are awake overnight, then do it sometime that you're asleep. So let's go back. Auto restart has been enabled. So that's going to make sure the phone runs in great performance. A couple other things if you tap on battery here, okay, uh, you can tap on this button. You can go to the settings. You have the adaptive battery, all right. This is a Android 9.0 Pi feature. It's a very nice option to enable. It learns how you use your phone and limits battery for apps that you don't use often. Okay, so that's gonna save you battery life. Not too much, but you might get an increase of one to two, maybe 3% over a couple weeks after the phone learns how to use, how you're using your smartphone. 
And of course, we've got the new edge screen interface. So mostly it's the same, uh, but when you press this button, let me add a couple edge screens or panels over here, just a couple of them, just to show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we've added a bunch of panels here. Now when we pull this in, the usual, this is the usual right here. You just swipe through all the options. What you can do is you can tap on this button and you get a, a quick preview of all your panels for quick access. So I can, boom, go right into the weather widget. I can tap this, boom, go right into smart select. And of course, uh, by the spirit of One UI, they're all designed to come down towards you so you can access them with one hand, all right? And that is an, a feature across the board. I can bring down this, all right, again, as you can see, within thumbs reach. Of course, you want to make sure you go here and enable the uh, quick open notification panel so you can swipe down on the screen to bring down the notifications uh, panel so you can access it with one hand, all the quick toggles, all right? Then you got the settings here. You got the search, finder search right there. Okay, now it's a notifications panel. You don't have to go here and tap search. You can just pull this down and tap, and that's the search, all right? Now, one thing that bothers me with that finder search is the phone is supposed to be one-handed use, but when you pull this down, that search bar is all the way at the top, so you have to go up there. That means you would have to use a second hand, which doesn't make too much sense, okay? And again, again, with this one, you tap here, and the bar is on the top, but at least the keyboard is ready. So that's what they should do over here as well. When I swipe this up, the keyboard should pop right up. Uh, with this one, it pops up, so it kind of makes sense or bring the finder search down to this level. But if you do go into the menus, uh, if you tap on things like the display, everything just comes down towards you, which is great, okay? So that's the official version, very fast and very snappy. I'm very impressed. Uh, I have seen an immediate increase in performance and optimization and the reduction of bugs as I updated from the beta to the official version. So that's absolutely great. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.